politics. We have a poll breaking today with some startling numbers for the president. A year before the election, the number of people who disapprove of how President Obama is handling his job is up to 52 percent. That would mean 46 uh, percent, uh, as you can see, uh, d approve, 52 percent disapprove. On the handling of the economy, that's where you really see the stark difference by most accounts. The number one issue in 2012, 63 percent disapprove, 35 percent approve of his handling. John Avalon is back, as promised. David Frum, former speechwriter for President George W. Bush, and Tim Punk, Democratic strategist, all with us. John Avalon, what's your take on this, especially when you look at history, where a lot of people like to say, okay, with an approval rating of the magical what number you can get elected? Well, what, what folks say is that you need to be, with your approval ratings over 50%, you got a good chance of being reelected. But let's view it with a sense of history. I mean, first of all, that 46 is a slight uptick on recent polls, yep. as crazy as that may sound. Gerald Ford had 44%, lost re-election. Jimmy Carter had 32% a year out from the election, soundly defeated. But George H.W. Bush had 62%, and he was defeated. The, the issue is, is the key is the trend. And the only bright spot for the president, independence, he's underwater, 42%. But centrist, he's got 52%, and mid Midwestern voters, 54%. So there's some good news to fund there, but he is a very vulnerable incumbent. Those are just the facts by any historic comparison. Uh, Tim, what do you think? you feel good when you see this, that the trend's been a slight improvement, or are you terrified, especially on the economic front? Well, the other good news for the president is the president's actually beating uh, his opponents when you look at one-to-one -one races. Mm -hmm. You look at Romney and you look at the aggregate of the polls over the last couple of weeks, uh, he's beating Romney by one or two points. He's beating the rest of the field by almost double digits. So, and on the economy, look, I think everybody's frustrated on the economy. The president's frustrated on the economy. Mm -hmm. But I think you also have to go back and remember where we came from. The, the last month of Bush's presidency, this economy shed 800,000 jobs. You fast forward to today, consumer spending is up. Last month we gained 80,000 jobs. Now everybody wants those numbers to be better, but the president put forward a plan that economists say would create 2 million jobs. So he's got some good points to make. And I think, again, when you go back to those one-on-one -on -one numbers, the president's numbers today are very good. David Frum, uh, what do you look at? The one-on-ones, like Tim is saying, where, where pre the president does pretty well, or the approval rating what, where he doesn't? Um, I actually look at French interest rates. Uh, the, 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 the well, that, real, now here's a new, a new little, little <laughs> curveball, okay. The, the real puff of winter for the president in these economic numbers um, is, is that they, res, they are responding to the drumbeat of fear and bad news from across the Atlantic, from the risk of the crack up of, of the euro. Mm -hmm. um, if, the, if that happens, and if it's bad news, that may just mean crack up the euro means cheap vacations in Italy and Greece for Americans, uh, which no one on this side of the Atlantic will mind too much. But if it portends, what it likely portends, a sharp recession in Europe with its effect not only American exports, but on the American financial system, 2012 could be another bad economic year. And the president really can't control that very much. Uh, and that will be, I think, one of the major determinants in his fate, um, of his fate. Does Europe go into a slide? Um, if so, presidents lose when there are recessions. They get blamed for everything. There's a famous study of the 1916 election where uh, Woodrow Wilson, up for re-election, got penalized by voters in New Jersey for a series of deadly shark attacks um, off their <laughs> coastline. Um, if they'll punish you for shark attacks, they sure will punish you for a recession in Europe. Oh, wow. So uh, we're relying on Sarkozy. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Okay, but let me ask you this, David, from uh, when we talk about the polls in Iowa, these polls are just out today. Um, Herman Cain still number one, Ron Paul number two, Mitt Romney number three, Gingrich uh, number four. Now, these are all within the margin of error, but you can see the gainers, Paul and Gingrich. You're, the, the guy that Tim is saying potentially could beat the president, Mitt Romney, is, well, he's not the guy that, that seems to be running away with it even now. I have to say, this, this kind of makes my, my blood boil. I mean, it's, sort of, it, it's so insulting. I, I can only imagine how Mitt Romney feels about it. I mean, here's the, the person on that stage. Um, due respect to Governor Huntsman and Rick Santorum, who says some smart things. He's the guy who obviously looks the president. And the Republican po voters keep um, moving from one joker to another. Um, Newt Gingrich, rather less of a joker than, than Herman Cain. Uh, but Newt Gingrich not going to be president. Uh, Newt Gingrich, tremendous, laden with all of these negatives. Newt Gingrich, who reopens all of the debates of the 19th 1990s, meaning the ref election becomes a referendum on the past, not the future. Uh, I think the choice for Republicans is obvious, and yet Republicans seem to be wanting to nominate a Obama critic in chief rather than a commander in chief. Tim, the, uh, the <laughs> Obama's coming out now. Uh, Romney's going to come out and fight against Obama. Now, the Obama camp has already been making it clear they think they're running against Romney, but he's going to come out against Obama. Hey, look, your unemployment's nine percent. You're done coming out with a bunch of ads. Can he get traction there as a businessman, or are they going to crush him for, well, no, when we look at your private equity record? 
Well, right now, look, I, I mean, Mitt Romney's got a bit of a free ride right now. Uh, he can be out there and he can sort of be the critic in chief without having to put forward any kind of uh, concrete plan. Um, but at the end of the day, it's going to come down to one person versus one person and one plan versus one plan. And I think at that point, I think you're going to have Americans looking at Mitt Romney as a businessman, Mitt Romney as a venture capitalist, Mitt Romney who wants to uh, lower taxes on the wealthiest Americans. And there's going to be a very clear choice between Mitt Romney and, and President Obama. And I think at that point, Obama's going to feel very good about his chances and his numbers are going to look very good. Final word, John. <laughs> Look, Mitt Romney's the only guy in politics with a glass ceiling. But what matters in Iowa, and Iowa could erase all of Herman Cain's troubles, what matters is not just the horse race, it's the ground game. That's the key to winning the caucus. And, and Romney's debating whether to play, and Paul has very devoted supporters. Gingrich and Cain, big question mark when it comes to their Iowa ground game. All right, thanks very much to all three. We appreciate it. Got to say, the race makes for good TV. David Fromm, at least. Okay.